In an era where the boundaries between man and machine are becoming increasingly blurred, the concept of transhumanism has emerged as a topic of intense debate and fascination. This movement, which envisions a future where technology holds the keys to our evolution and salvation, challenges our traditional notions of humanity, spirituality, and the very essence of life. As we stand on the precipice of a new age, where AI and human integration could redefine our existence, we delve deep into the world of transhumanism, exploring its potential benefits, ethical dilemmas, and the profound implications it holds for our future. So let's start. In recent times, the cooperation between technology and human existence has reached unprecedented heights, and this is where transhumanism comes in. Ray Kurzweil's idea of the singularity signifies the point when computers autonomously learn and evolve. Little did we know that there is a movement advocating this already. Transhumanism is a movement that envisions a future where science and technology, rather than spirituality, hold the keys to salvation. The motivation behind transhumanism is twofold, to replace or enhance organs or functionalities that are impaired or non-existent, and to improve organs that are functioning correctly. At the heart of this movement lies scientism, a belief that scientific inquiry will answer all existential questions while relegating religion to the background. Scientism's core premise is that material discovery will be humanity's path to salvation and transcendence. However, transhumanism takes this further by asserting that technology will be the instrument of this salvation. Before we give examples backing this ideology, let's get some things straight about transhumanism. First, transhumans believe that our species urgently requires improvement due to environmental harm, food scarcity, and wars. But what does this all mean for humanity? To them, current lifespans, health, and cognitive abilities seem insufficient. These folks also propose that aging could be halted or even reversed, with enhancements boosting intelligence and physical prowess. Some even contemplate transferring human consciousness into computers for virtual immortality. Transhumanists insist that what follows transhumanism could be superior. They see this as the natural progression of human evolution, similar to how Homo erectus evolved into Homo sapiens. Scary as it may sound, this might be one of the last human generations if transhumanists' visions come to fruition. One striking example of this transhumanism ideology is the advocacy to implant AI microchips in our brains. Elon Musk is a proponent of this idea. According to him, he envisioned a world where billions of people carry these implants to guide artificial intelligence according to human will. His company Neuralink is calling for volunteers to participate in trials involving the insertion of a microchip into their brains. Well, that's not all. Brain-computer interfaces are no longer just a concept. They are a reality. Companies like Neuralink, BlackRock Neurotech, and Synchron have already implanted these interfaces in human brains, blurring the line between man and machine. A transhumanist, Rob Spencer, a filmmaker who replaced his eye with a video camera, shared with the world a glimpse into his unique experience which seems to be more of him benefiting from this technology. Rob Spencer is blind in one eye and nine years ago he replaced his eye with a video camera. According to him, he had an accident with a shotgun when he was nine, and by the time he turned 30, he decided to call the doctor to remove his eye. However, at that time, he had become a filmmaker, so he decided to just call some engineers and see if they could help him out and insert a camera inside the blind side of his eye. Rob believes that most people become transhumanists because they want to represent a part of their body that they have lost, or people who want to enhance any part of their body with technology. For Rob, these technologies make the body better. With the way Rob talked with excitement during this interview, it was glaring that this transhuman move by him really made his life better. According to him, I'm a guy who lost his eye. I wanted a cool eye camera. Before, I felt like just a guy who lost his eye. Now that I have an eye camera, I feel a bit cooler. I feel nicer and I feel better. I'm happy I'm a homo excelsior. There is no doubt that transhumanism makes sense with Robert because something in his body stopped working, so he exchanged it with something artificial. Note that transhumanism isn't only about eye cameras. It can also represent a significant evolution from existing technologies that assist the human body, like crutches or dentures, posing radical transformations in human capabilities and overall life experience. 
However, everybody's story cannot be like that of Spencer, as his reason for being a transhumanist is not the only drive behind being a transhuman. Even though it seeks to improve human life, it could also be for other reasons, possibly covert intentions, such as economic and power interests, as highlighted by experts like Antonio Diegis. Antonio Diegis, a philosopher with a keen eye on transhumanism, brings an insightful perspective to the table. In an interview with him about this topic, he points out that behind the fascination with human enhancement through technology, there are some underlying interests, including economic and power-driven motives. It's no coincidence that major tech giants in Silicon Valley throw their weight behind transhumanist initiatives. One of the intriguing aspects he highlights is the potential for a nano-divide. This term signifies that access to advanced nanotechnologies might create disparities and conflict between those who can afford these enhancements and those who cannot. This line of thought raises questions about social justice and equity in a world where technology could redefine what it means to be human. Note that this rise in social injustice and inequality could bring about war, hence making this reason for transhumanism a negative one. Just like most other people's concerns, Diege also questions whether transhumanism may strip away some essential aspects of the human life experience, such as the struggle to overcome challenges. In essence, he's concerned that by bypassing these challenges, we might lose a valuable part of our humanity. A very valid point, if you ask me. Now, turning our attention to James Clement, the president of Better Humans, who painted a vivid picture of transhumanism's core principles. He agreed and affirmed that transhumanism has the potential to help humans surpass their biological limitations, potentially extending lifespans while also improving our quality of life. James Clement's discussion about concepts like indefinite lifespan in transhumanism explains more about the fundamental contrast and conflict between the ambitions and dreams of transhumanists and the intrinsic human experiences of birth, aging, suffering, and death. In transhumanism, the idea of achieving an indefinite lifespan or potentially even immortality through advanced technologies is an enticing prospect. Transhumanists envision a future where science and innovation can halt, reverse, or mitigate the effects of aging, allowing individuals to enjoy longer, healthier lives. This concept fundamentally challenges the conventional human experience of aging, suffering, and mortality. On the other hand, the human condition has been characterized by a natural life cycle that includes birth, aging, suffering, and eventually death. These aspects are deeply ingrained in our cultural, religious, and philosophical narratives. Human existence has evolved to encompass the acceptance of mortality and the recognition that suffering and death are integral parts of life. While the pursuit of an indefinite lifespan might be appealing, it challenges the very essence of what it means to be human. It raises questions about whether the elimination of aging and death would rob humanity of important aspects of our existence, including the motivation to achieve, the appreciation of life's fleeting moments, and the moral and ethical considerations tied to mortality. But it doesn't end here. Another line of thought is the philosophical perspective offered by Tamim Mobayed. He had pointed out the dangers associated with transhumanism. One of the examples he gave is the case of autonomy and injustice. In the case of injustice, he shared the same line of thought with Antonio Diegas, especially as regards people's lives being valued more than the other. He pointed out that the issue of autonomy begins with the parents making decisions about the physical makeup of the child, and then the state at some stage comes in and makes decisions about the genetic makeup of its citizens. He borrowed an interesting concept from Jürgen Habermas to drive home his points by differentiating between what's grown and what's made. According to him, this is key to the human condition as we are supposed to struggle with things, overcome, and be challenged as this makes us humans. However, transhumanism removes this. We also have the potential to be huge and to be low. Our human nature comes with the freedom of choice to choose whichever way our lives will go with these above conditions. But with transhumanism, there is a big possibility that this freedom will no longer be available. In summary, there is no doubt that transhumanism comes with some of its benefits. However, we all need to be open-minded about this ideology while entertaining other points that might negate it. Let's look at some of these alternate concerns. While these AI systems may make humans smarter, they lack the essence of a soul. 
Many of the creators behind these technological advancements view the human brain as the soul itself, rejecting traditional religious notions. They are in essence playing God in the realm of artificial intelligence and transhumanism. If you've watched this video all the way through, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop a comment below to let us know you've gained some insights from the content. For more interesting topics, subscribe and make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.